Hey guys, what's up? Haru, did you know that the Pyro Archon's name might actually hold the key to Natland's most dangerous secrets? We're talking occult ties and ancient dragons and the power that could shake the very foundations of the Night Kingdom, or at least how it was created. We're talking about Berserk references today. Think God Hand and Ballot vibes. The Night Kingdom might actually work just like that. Turns out Mavika's connections to the demonic names run even deeper than I thought, linking her to none other than Haborim from the Ars Goisha. Now, this is where things get wild. And yes, this theory totally brings us back to Berserk. These connections could rewrite Natland's entire history and foreshadow a very ominous future. From the Sacred Flame to the first Archon Shbalanke, oh and let's not forget about the Fire Serpent Shio Kowatl and how ancient names hold the key to it all. And by the way, Haborim's name, it's definitely not what you think either. So let's crack this theory wide open. The name Haborim comes from the wonderful occult book of demons, Ars Goisha. And based on what I could gather, Haborim is a duke or great duke of hell, commanding 26 demon legions, and often depicted as a three-headed man, a serpent on one side, a quite handsome man on the middle, and finally a cat or a calf on the other side. Now apart from the three heads, the human head also has two stars on his forehead. We can see that Mavuika has the same stars but in her eyes instead. Haborim is depicted to be riding a viper and that he carries a firebrand or a torch that he uses to set castles, palaces, or even cities on fire whenever he is requested to do so. Dukes, archdukes, and grand dukes are known to be the highest rank of nobility before an emperor slash empress or prince slash princess. But back to Haborim, he is also known to be called Aim or Aim, as well as being a cherubim, an angel that fell from heaven after joining Lucifer. But in Hebrew, the name Haborim is a synonym for Satan the Devil. It's quite fitting as he is often requested to attack those that rebelled against the demon kings of hell. If you're familiar with Natland's current lore, Haborim's qualities can be related to not just the Archon Mavuika. Since everything in Natland is intrinsically linked together through the sacred flame in the Night Kingdom, the name Haborim might honestly be from the very first Archon or even the Sovereign Dragon of Natland. The special fire called Phlogiston that flows all over Natland originally was used by the dragons. And this fire was then stolen by a dragon sage, Waxaklahun Uba Khan. Oh my god, this name. Given to a human and later creating the first Pyro Archon, Shbalanke. Now, with the way Haborim is depicted, he very well may be representing the different beings and forms that held the fire of Natlan, but holds the same memories of the first bearer of Archonhood, much like the ancient names of Natlan's people. Just like today, Haborim might be an ancient name of the very first Archon or even the Dragon of Natlan, holding the memories of the past and shown to all of the Archons that came after. Something else that Haborim was able to do was gain the favor of the Shalia, the once human but now inhuman apostles of the demon kings. This is where the Berserk references start and if you're familiar with the Berserk series, then you may know of the apostles and their Beherits, or Behelits, which are demon stones or eggs from hell, the underworld that is intrinsically linked to whoever it belongs to. Behelits appear out of nowhere and can be obtained at any time. Those who have activated a Behelit exchange a part of their soul to join demon kind. Spatial, physical, or spiritual separation doesn't matter so long as someone's desires are powerful enough. Now this is quite interesting since ancient names in Genshin are also intrinsically linked to their bearers. Both the Beherits and ancient names function as keys between the astral world and the physical world. Now ancient name bearers aren't exactly the same as the apostles from Berserk but we do have similar apostles called Agents of Night's Will the Wyabs, which are in a sense servants of the Night Kingdom that grants its bearers supernatural powers such as revival. But then again, the Wyabs are capable of enacting the rituals for revival as well as the Night Soul Blessing. The Pyro Archon herself, Shbalanke, and currently Mavuika might also be a god hand for being the one who reincarnates people with the help of the Wyabs. It's also interesting how unique name bearers can freely manifest themselves even after they die as if their wills never faded in the Night Kingdom. This is quite similar to Berserk's Crimson Beherits, which gives the bearer the potential to be reborn as a god hand. Lastly, the Night King who is the leader of all Wyabs. We only know him as Will of the Night and the Night King, but it might very well be similar to the idea of evil, dictating the fate of the Natlanese people, keeping them in Natlan, never being able to leave.
Mavuika is the current Pyro Archon of Netland, as well as being the Pyro Archon 500 years ago. Right off the bat, she possesses Haberim's humor, making people witty, but answers truthfully in serious matters, which we could see from the entire Archon quest. Based on her possible ability to become a Cucasaur and her photo with the Yumkasaur hatchlings, she may have been a mix of the Flower Feather Clan from her mother and the Scions of the Canopy from her father. Mavuika's origins are from the deity of fire, Mahuika, holding the secret of making fire. The reason for her relations to Habarim is that an NPC called her Lady Habarim. But there's quite a number of relations between them than just fire. First are the two stars on Habarim's forehead, but on Mavuika, it's on her two eyes that she only had after becoming the Pyro Archon. Next is the torch flame of Habarim, which is likely the sacred flame, and the big white flame that Mavuika visits while recalling her past. This goes deeper if you've done the Chosen of Dragon series, where we pick up the golden entreaty said to be split from the eyes of a dragon, one white which could be pure, and one black which we don't have yet but might be a corrupted eye of the abyss. What I mean to say is that both dragons and humans might possess these engraved eyes marked with either stars or something else within the game, which could be similar to ancient names. Mavika's possible shape-shifting ability is also related to Habrim, not as Habrim himself but another demon said to be the same as him named Rom. Rom is an earl of hell that can transform into a crow a bird. But something special about Rom is that he can also tell the past, the present, and the future. Similarly, Mavuika claims the past, present, and future are all in the same time frame, remembering the past that happened, living in the present, and envisioning the future she wants to happen for Natlan. Movika's design origins is something that I really want to highlight as it might be from Hoyo's older games. This is Asta from Honkai Gakuen or Gun Girl Z. In the game, she was the Hersher of Rock, but it's interesting that her design itself was where Movika's design seems to be inspired from. At some point in the game, she became the director in fighting the Honkai, but her hatred for humanity made her more susceptible to Honkai corruption, hence becoming the Hersher of Rock and taking control of the God of War, an anti-Honkai weapon created by none other than Dr. May. Mavika's initial design before she became an Archon is quite similar to Asta, but her backstory hasn't been revealed in more detail just yet. Shbalanke is the first Pyro Archon of Natlan who defeated the Pyro Dragon, Shiyu Kawatl, and was revived by the flames, likely pointing to the Sacred Flame. First of all, Shiyu Kawatl is portrayed as a segmented serpent that symbolizes fire, the dry season, and the weapon of the Sun God. Shiyu Kawatl is translated to Torquoise Serpent and is a symbolic translation of the Fire Serpent. Something worth noting is that Shiyu Kawatl is the spiritual form of the Fire Deity and the physical form is Shiyu Tekutli. There you go. A god with the tattoo of Shiyu Kawatl on his back, which we'll talk about later along with the turn fire if you can notice what I'm hinting at. After his rise to Archonhood, he borrowed the power of the heavens called Ranova and set up Natlan's special system for mortals to become Archons. Shibalanke seems to have one of the golden entreaty eyes that was split from a dragon. Based on the order of how it was written in the quest, the white one was given to a silver dragon, the stage of the solid flame, Waxaklahun Ubakan, and buried in a mural ruin. The second is the black one, which was possibly given to Shbalanke, called a resurrected corpse. This dark disc might have been Natlan's turn fire from Kenichi's Chronicle Quest, a white transparent flame that burns everything. Well, almost everything. Now this goes back to Habarim, which could burn cities, castles, and palaces when requested to. What this means is that Shbalanke's ancient name could be Habarim and that it was passed down through different archons, not as the bearer of the turn fire, but as the bearer of the ancient dragon and Shio Kawatl's power and Shbalanke's will. At this time, Shbalanke already established the system of mortals becoming archons and by then he entered the Sacred Flame. And since the Sacred Flame is connected to the Night Kingdom, Shbalanke might also be the Night King or the idea of evil if we're talking about the Berserk reference. The humans of that time would then wait for the successor of their civilization to rise. This was the rule that Shbalanke created since gods don't exist in Natlan, which is interesting since almost all the other regions apart from Snesnaya, have their own god and god kings. Humans being the weakest race isn't the likely reason, though it likely has something to do with the Night Kingdom and its connections to the humans that can't leave their region. Maybe the gods didn't want to be tied to the Night Kingdom. 
Now at the same time Shbalanke went into the sacred flame also led to the eternal empire Ochkanatlan and the tyrant named Ochkan who abused his power and created the ineffable city which was a separation from divinity and the mortal world. But it's worth noting that Ochkan wasn't an archon from what we could tell. He was a mastermind that hated the dragons quite a lot during the human dragon war and was able to decipher how dragons used iridescent inscriptions which today became the phlogiston engravings for humans. Ochkan was a prisoner who was forgiven by Shpalanke, and the people of Natlan during the time were still waiting for a new Archon after Shpalanke went into the sacred flame. So it seems like this time period was an unauthorized rule and tyranny by Ochkan as a form of revenge on the dragons that he hated. Sadly, his anger became the cause of his hunger for more power. Now, based on the unfinished reverie, at some point, Ochkan discovered the abyss or forbidden knowledge, leading to the wars between tribes and from what I could understand, this then leads to the slow deterioration of the ineffable city as well as the story of the scarlet-eyed youth. Now even though Ochkan was a tyrant, he still highlights how the rules of Archonton that Shbalanke created for humanity works, and that it doesn't just choose those who are smart, powerful, or ambitious. There's a certain desire or personality trait that needs to be met for an ancient name bearer or an Archon to be chosen. This again goes back to the concept of ancient names or Beherits in that a certain character needs to possess a certain characteristic or desire that fits with Shbalanke's rules, which again we've theorized that Balanke is the Night King, the idea of evil, or that a character must be born with the characteristics of the first Archon's ancient name, be it Haburim, Shiyukowatl, or whatever name is connected with being an Archon, along with its memories. That is, if there is one at least. Even though Ochkan wasn't exactly any sort of god or god king like the other regents, he still acted like one by using his turn fire to oppress people and then at some point driving himself mad and finding the abyss, much like many god kings in Tevat. Alright, that's a wrap on this theory. Honestly, from everything we've talked about, from Mavika's ties to Habarim, the Sacred Flame, and those Berserk-style God Hands and Beherits, and even the idea of evil with the Night Kingdom and ancient names, all the way to the rules of Archon Hood, it really does excite me to see if any of these actually pans out, especially the Berserk references. But who knows, we might see some of these elements come to life in Genshin 5.1. Between the Fire Serpent Shiokowatl, the resurging importance of ancient names and revival, and the wild twists that seem to be coming, these next patches could deliver one of the most intense storylines yet. So keep an eye out for those berserk connections, okay? Because they might show up sooner than we think. But that's enough theorizing for now. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my wild ramblings and theories as we gear up for 5.1. Now I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, mad theorists. Bye!